Hey guys, Chad and Sebastian here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center again today. And we're going to talk about the best feeder bugs to feed your lizards. Now, this is going to be a pretty good list. And of course, it, I, I'm not going to be able to go over obviously every single lizard and the best type for each one. Uh, because each lizard has different types that's going to be better for them. But as a general rule of thumb, there's some that's better than others. And some that do a great uh, job where some not so much that are readily fed, okay? Now, before we get into that, right down here, right there about uh, Sebastian's uh, arm there is that uh, uh, subscriber button. Go ahead and hit that if you have not thus far. Um, and uh, for those of you that have, we appreciate uh, your subscription and uh, we appreciate you following on week after week after week. And uh, we're trying to get caught up on as many of these videos as we can. People are writing us in all the time, wanting to see new information or having information they want us to film about. Uh, medical questions and habitat questions and questions about the zoo. Uh, all kinds of different things. Things to feed, not to feed. Uh, so feel free and write us in. You can write us in the comments or you can get with us even in the description below, which has all of the zoo's information. Now, let's get right into this. First, First, right out of the gate, I just literally took a phone call right before doing uh, starting this video. Lady's got a chameleon, bought her from PetSmart, of course, world, one of the world's worst places uh, for your reptiles, PetSmart, uh, and a lot of your big chain stores. Not so much, again, we've talked about this, not so much just because of the stores. It's where they get them from. It's where they have to get them from, where they're mandated by corporate mandate to get them from. Crappy, absolute crappy garbage places um, that they get them from. But let's just say like with this lady, the first thing that she was told by Petco, the absolute best thing, uh, I'm sorry, PetSmart, the absolute best thing you should feed that chameleon is crickets and dusting with calcium powder. <laughs> like, oh my God. So world's worst thing to ever feed any of your lizards is crickets, okay? You may as well take your lizard out in the yard and just go let him eat grass. It's going to be more nutritional than some stupid cricket's going to be. You cannot gut load them because like rats and mice, they pee and they crap way too often. Crickets also go along re-ingesting their own feces, so it causes tapeworms and pinworms and other such GI tract microorganisms that uh, us and a lot of other medical facilities have to end up treating because they were they fed what some pet store told them to feed, which is completely the wrong thing, okay? Now, I also want you to think about this in the same phone call. She says, yeah, do calcium powder. Yeah, calcium powder is great. It's great stuff. Uh, calcium with VD3. The problem is, is she's like, well, we're supposed to sprinkle it on the crickets. I said, first, my first question was, what happens when you wax your car and you put water on it? It beads up, right? And then what happens? It runs right off, right? Well, exactly. That's what happens with powder and a uh, hard exoskeleton insect. That powder just does not stick onto them uh, like it would if it was on fruits and vegetables, something that was a little bit more watery that it could adhere to a little bit better. Now, of course, you can do something along the lines of taking like a container like Sebastian's got, a Ziploc bag, whatever, and put some calcium powder in the bottom of it and get your insect feeders wet and do a little shake and bake like you was about to bread them, uh, getting ready to deep fry something. Yeah, that'll stick to them a little bit better. Uh, you could put them in uh, in your feeder dish and put the calcium powder in the bottom as the, the feeders are running around. Then, uh, uh, of course, they can, uh, you know, get the calcium and get the feeders as well. But starting right out of the gate, crickets, horrible. Horrible choice of feeders. They're not going to be nutritionally fed. They're not going to grow very well off of it. And you got a 90, but pretty much a 98% chance of it causing intestinal parasites. Now, let's go over some of the things that are fantastic, fantastic to use as a lizard feeder. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show here, and we're going to talk about, I'm going to let Sebastian talk about this one. You got them tweezers, boy, because I know it's kind of hard. Okay. Uh, it first, right out of the gate, is pretty much readily sold everywhere, um, is the superworm. Now, of course, we will talk about mealworms are just a smaller version of a superworm. I don't personally like mealworms because they're so small, it takes a million of them to fill something up. Uh, when you can go with something bigger and it doesn't take as many. But mealworms is, is a good feeder for some of your smaller uh, lizards if you're worried about a superworm being too big. They do make a good feeder choice, okay? Now, I'm going to let Sebastian show you this superworm here real quick and just talk about it for a second. Up to the camera. Yeah, I know. Well, put it in the tweezer. That way you can hold it. End of point. All right, so that's what he's talking about. Superworms, they're the larger version of the... Let's see if we can get... Yeah. Uh, we get... <laughs> they're the larger version of the mealworms. Like I said, mealworms aren't as great. They're smaller. Uh, these you do not refrigerate. Do not refrigerate. Uh, they'll be uh, they'll be dead worms. Um, 
But yeah, these are a lot better, a lot fatter. They're a little bit more full of fat and protein both. Uh, they're the lowest on the nutrition chain as far as what we sell here in the zoo. Uh, we also do the hissing cockroaches, the dubia roaches, the fuzzies. We'll talk about all that stuff here in a minute. But the worms are good, especially good for dragons, uh, baby dragons. They're long and slender, as you've seen. They're, they're very long and slender. So they work great for baby dragons, baby worms, or baby leopard geckos, uh, baby chameleons. Uh, stuff like that is something they can take in, but it only takes three, maybe four to fill them up. And then uh, you'll have a good meal as far as the worms go. Okay, so next, the next one up the chain, which is a much usually better choice, is the Dubia or Dubai roaches, okay? The Dubia roaches are, are uh, medium size. I mean, they come from anything from pinheads up to about the size of my thumb, okay? So we've got the Dubia roach right here. This is a medium. It's not quite full grown. It's not full breeder size. Uh, but these guys right here, uh, it's not as hard for them to process these exoskeletons as like it is in the superworms. The superworms have that really, really hard exoskeleton uh, that's, that they just cannot process. So it gets broke down kind of, but it comes out still a lot of the times as uh, pieces. Think about fish scales kind of concept. Um, so uh, it's a little bit harder for them to process it. Make sure that your, uh, your animal is warm enough. Now, the next one is one I absolutely love. All right. So I love messing with these things uh, because we'll have women come into the, the zoo and go, ah! and when they see something like this right here. Oh, crap. <laughs> he jumped. All right. <laughs> Look at the size of this freaking roach. <laughs> he, keeps, he keeps jumping and falling here. And these things make a squawking sound. You remember as we were growing up, all right, so, so we have these little plastic toys that you would wind up on the side. And I know a lot of, the, a lot of folks, if you're under 25, you ain't got a clue what I'm talking about. But anyway, uh, it's, yeah, these little toys, they were about that big, they were about that long. They had these little feet and they kept doing like this right here. You wind it up and it, that's what it sounds like. Okay, so you got this. <laughs> You got this freaking hissing roach, and this ain't even full grown. These things get bigger than this, and uh, some some people call them uh, what water bugs or Florida bugs. And of course, a lot of the Floridians that come up here will call them Florida bugs or uh, palmetto bugs uh, is one of the things they'll call them. But these right here are absolutely awesome. And no, they don't come out that big. Uh, they do come out. Uh, Smaller than this one, okay? So there's, there's small ones. The only disadvantage of these things is, as you can see, these stupid things can climb everything, okay? Uh, so it's not like the dubias that, uh, um, that want to, uh, uh, that cannot climb all the surfaces, superworms and dubias. Easy to keep them into a feeder. Uh, but again, this right here is another great, great insect to feed. And generally speaking, for like tegus, for monitors, for uh, spiny tail iguanas, for uh, bearded adult bearded dragons, uh, even adult leopard geckos. Generally speaking, one is a meal. Appropriate size, one is a meal. Um, of course, once your tegus and monitors start getting bigger, no one is not a meal. But for an adult dragon, a full-grown hissing roach, they, they're gonna be they're gonna be huffing and puffing by the time they get done chewing that rascal up. But it, it's it's a great snack. Every once in a while, it works out great. Uh, another great feeder. It's not an insect feeder. I know this is all about uh, what the best insect feeders is. But for a lot of your uh, a lot of your lizards, just a good old rat pinky, not mice. Mice is freaking junk. It's garbage food. It's like a cricket. But rat pinkies, uh, uh, ASFs, uh, which is the African saw fur, uh, pinkies, things like that, really good protein, and there's no exoskeletons they have to break down. And also, anything with a bone structure breaks down into calcium, okay? So that just helps out with your calcium and vitamin intake. But back to the feeder insects, there are other ones that's really, really good. Wax worms are great, high in fat, shouldn't be done all the time. Tomato horn worms, uh, those are like fruit gushers, okay, to your, uh, to your dragons. Uh, big, greenish, bluish, and when they bite down, they squirt juice everywhere, you know, it's kind of concept. Uh, so, uh, and they got dribble coming out and all the green slime and everything else. And of course, most of the women go, you know, kind of concept, but they absolutely love those juicy things. You've got Phoenix worms, you've got uh, butter worms. Those are really good, uh, good, good feeder choices. So there's a lot of great feeder insects for your reptile, okay? Now, again, I'm not gonna talk about which ones is best for which species because that would take hundreds of hours just to do in one video. Um, because, I mean, again, understand the difference. Like a Chinese water dragon is almost strictly insectivorous. A bearded dragon is omnivorous and semi-insectivorous uh, where they're gonna eat insects, fruits, vegetables, and they'll even eat a little bit of meat product like a rat pinky or something like that from time to time, mouse pinky, whatever. Um, but understand what the species is that you have and what tends to work best for them. And I also want you to remember, 
Like the video that we did just a few weeks ago that talks about balance in diet is important. Don't just feed the same thing all the time. Understand the different ones that's really, really good for your lizard and make sure to give a balanced diet. Don't just stick with one thing because it works, okay? Just because it works doesn't always mean it's what's best all the time for that animal. Now, I hope this has been helpful. I hope you've had fun in this and uh, uh, we have a good time like we always do. Uh, we appreciate you guys following along. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button, hit the bell for notifications. Uh, we appreciate you following along. Again, our description will be in the, uh, in the information below for the zoo. Feel free to write us in. Let us know what you want to film on. Anytime uh, you want to see something new or you have questions and you want us to film about it, feel free to let us know. As we continue going, we're, we uh, still get more and more and more. So we're, again, we're trying to keep up uh, and trying to get to a lot of the questions and a lot of the things that people want us to film about. Uh, so we appreciate, again, you guys writing us in. Now, we will either see you uh, here at the zoo or we'll see you on the next episode. Later.